In this introductory video, we are briefly give an overview and explain the technology concepts behind Bluetooth. Bluetooth has two distinct and not compatible protocol, Bluetooth Classic and Bluetooth Smart. Bluetooth Classic aims to provide a high bandwidth, low distance, highly standardized protocol. It sounds good at first glance, but high bandwidth results, high power consumption and highly standardized protocol is more difficult to understand and develop. Bluetooth Smart was developed to fix these challenges. It has a much lower power consumption, usually lower cost, and it's simple and clean, easy to understand protocol. Bluetooth Smart is just as widely supported nowadays as Bluetooth Classic. It's supported by all the major OS versions like Android, iOS, Windows, Mac and Linux. It's easy to develop custom profiles with Bluetooth Smart, but there are standard profiles available for some key use cases like human interface device, sport trackers and so on. Bluetooth Smart is also known as Bluetooth Low Energy and often abbreviated as BLE. Bluetooth Smart Ready, on the other hand, means BLE and Classic in one unit, like for example a new smartphone would be. A developer usually only communicates with two or three elements of the stack. GAP, GET, and maybe Security Manager, depending on the use case. GAP, which is an abbreviation for General Access Profile, handles everything needed to establish and maintain a connection. Advertisements, connection parameters, opening and closing a connection, and so on. GET, which is an abbreviation for General Attribute Profile, is probably the most important part of the stack for a developer. It's used for data transaction in an open connection. Security Manager is important for developing secure, encrypted or authenticated communications. This will be covered in a separate video. Let's talk about advertisements, which are handled by the GAP. They are used for discovering available devices and services from advertisers with a scanning device called Central. Three of the 40 channels are dedicated for advertisement. The remaining 37 is dedicated for communication in connection. The advertisement packet can also have user data, so it can be used as a simple broadcasting service. Apple's iBeacon and Google's Edison are examples of this use case. Advertisements can work with very low power consumption. Sending it on all three channels takes just 1.3 milliseconds, and the delay between advertisements can be configured to more than 10 seconds. One of the most important parameters of a connection is the connection interval, which is configured using the gap. Communication is handled in intervals. It's a method for scheduled sleep. Both devices in the connection know when to wake up for the start of the interval called the anchor point. Usually only a small portion of the connection interval is used for actual data exchange. The remaining time the devices can sleep or communicate with other devices in case of the central device. The connection interval can be from 7.5 milliseconds to 4 seconds, but a BLE capable device does not necessarily support the whole range. A peripheral device can also negotiate with the central that it will only wake up for every nth connection event. This feature is called slave latency and it's a fundamental part of Bluetooth Smart for power saving. The data throughput of connection depends on whether packets are acknowledged or not on an application level and on connection interval. In communications requiring application layer acknowledgements, it is not possible to send data and acknowledge it in one connection interval, so an acknowledged transaction will take two connection intervals to complete. It is possible to use connection interval for sending multiple unidirectional packets without acknowledgements. One packet has 20 or 22 bytes, depending on the packet type. GET is used for every application layer transaction. Typically, a peripheral device, for example a sports tracker, has a GET table, which is basically a database, and a central device, for example a smartphone, manipulates this database. Note that the roles are swapped. The peripheral is the GET server, and the central is the GET client. Transactions from the server to the client can be indications and notifications. For example, a warning from a sports tracker that your heart rate is too high. The difference between the two, that notification doesn't need acknowledgement, so it's not as reliable, but you can send multiple notifications in one connection interval. 
Transactions from the client to the server can be read, write, and write without response. For example, reading the steps taken from a tracker, or writing the level of heart rate when it should send a warning. Write is also used on special records of the GET table to enable notifications and indications. Write without response is similar to notifications. It's not as reliable as regular write, but it's much faster for bulk data transmission. The top level of the GET hierarchy is a profile, which is composed of one or more services necessary to fulfill a use case. In Bluetooth Smart, there are two types of profiles. Adopted profiles specified by the Bluetooth SIG and vendor specific profiles. The adopted profiles specify the services, characteristics, their properties, roles, and possibly even connection parameters, and all of these have to be implemented as specified to claim to support for the particular profile. With vendor specific profiles, the developers can create their own services, characteristics, combination of those and define GET properties and connection parameters. A service is a group of related characteristics. For example, there's a standard service called health thermometer with characteristics for the measurement, the location of the device like armpit and measuring interval. A characteristic consists of a set of attributes indicating the operations the characteristic supports, the values and a set of permissions relating to security. It can also have a client characteristic configuration descriptor, usually abbreviated as CCCD, where the client can enable or disable notifications and or indications. The lowest level of the GUT hierarchy is the attribute. Every service and characteristic consists attributes. Each attribute has a handle, a unique ID, a permission and a value field. The handle is basically the address used in GUT operations. The unique ID determines the type of the attribute. For example, there's a unique ID for characteristic declaration. The permission sets the usual read-write permissions, and if manipulating the attribute requires encryption or authentication, it's also shown here. Let's see a simple GET example. Probably the simplest service is the standard battery service. It must have the standard battery level characteristic. Read capabilities are mandatory, and while notify capabilities are not, let's include it as well. And let's say the actual value is 73%. So the first attribute has the unique ID of 2800, which means its service declaration. Its value is always read only, and it must have one unique ID. In this example, it's 180F, which means the next few characteristics make a standard battery service. The next attribute has the unique ID of 2803, which means it's a characteristic declaration. Again, its value is always read-only, and its value is 1 byte characteristic properties, 2 bytes value handle, and a 2, 4, or 16 byte unique ID. In our case, the properties are 1, 2, which means the characteristic is readable and notification can be enabled on it. The next two bytes show that the actual value will be in the attribute which handle is 1C. Finally, the ID is 2A19, which means this is a standard battery level characteristic. The next attribute holds the actual value of the characteristic. Its ID is 2A19, which is the ID of the characteristic, and it's read-only. Finally, we have an attribute with the ID of 2909, which means it's a CCCD, or client characteristic configuration descriptor. Its value must be readable and writable, and only the lower two bits have meaning. The second to lowest bit is one when indications are enabled, and the lowest bit is one when notifications are enabled. So in our case, the notifications are enabled. Please continue to watch our videos on the Silicon Labs Bluetooth Smart product family BlueGecko. You can also find other collaterals on Bluetooth Smart Technology and BlueGecko from the Scilabs.com website. Thanks for watching.